Hi guys, Plagaga here. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm back, finally. To sum up my absence in one sentence, um, my computer crashed. Yes, and it took me way, way longer than I thought to get everything back. Really, really annoying. I really hope it doesn't happen to you. If you have really important stuff on your computer, just put everything on an external hard drive like I did now. I was not wise. Don't do that. Have a lot of information on your computer. Don't do any kind of backup. It's not good at all. So, um, but I don't want to actually put too many details about my private life now here and could talk about this for like 10 minutes. But instead, I actually want to jump directly to the really interesting topic of this video. And this is some new kind of video where I want to make some kind of theories about upcoming cards. But I don't want to theorize or fanboy about upcoming cards what I want, but instead what seems logic when you look at the story of certain archetypes. For example, the TCG exclusive archetypes um, like Subterras or Spirals. And today we're going to look at the four new cards that await us in Maximum Crisis. So of course I've seen the Raging Tempest support and I agree it was sadly completely awful. Um, I've seen a lot of people who gave up on the archetype already and who think that only 4 cards cannot push the archetype far enough to be relevant in the metagame. To be honest I was one of them but then Konami actually leaked some information about Maximum Crisis, a set description and it, after figuring out a few clues and discovering a few things I actually come to a different conclusion. I will not talk about the cards that they will need, I will talk about the cards that would make sense depending on the lore. Um, also you will see me make a lot of comparisons to other TCG exclusive archetypes like Burning Biz or Cosmo. Okay, without further ado, let's go. Let's start with the most obvious facts. We will get two B mods, a level 8 and a level 11, one level 1 Nemesis monster and a trap card. So the monsters are pretty obvious because those are the three levels that are left to fill in the gaps. So in the end we will have one subterra monster with each level. So the Level 1 to level 4 are the Nemesis and level 5 to level 12 are the Behemoth monsters. The trap card is also pretty obvious because all TCG exclusive archetypes got a set amount of spells and traps. Burning Abyss and Cosmo all got 2 spells and 2 traps so it also makes sense for Subterras to get another trap card. Again it also makes sense to have a different kind of trap card that we already have. A normal spell, we got a field spell and a continuous spell. Now we got a trap card, so it would make sense to get a counter or continuous trap. My guess would be continuous trap, but there is simply no proof for this guess, so I don't want to dive further into this. Only one thing, um, traps normally, or spells and traps, normally showers the places and the story of the archetype, so it would make a lot of sense to see some how the final battle of um, the B mods against the Nemesis monsters in the battle for the city uh, on the artwork of this card. But depending what is on this card, there can be conclusions drawn even for the future. Again, think about it, um, Burning Abyss got Beatrice one year later after release, so it would again make sense if we get one additional card, kind of like Cosmo gets an additional card probably in, in the next month. And that will probably be announced in a few weeks. So let's have a look at the Behemoths next. So what do we know about them? Well there's a level 11, a level 8, there are earth and flip effect monsters and they can flip themselves face down and you can special summon them from the hand if the monster flip face down on your side on the feet. Unless of course you did read the official Konami Maximum Crisis set description. A day right. All is not yet lost. The final battle against the Scepter of Mods begins and the Subterra Nemesis receive help from an unlikely source. So what is this unlikely source? What could it be? At first I thought it would be a Behemoth, but then again it wouldn't make sense. They are fighting against each other, there has to be a reason why the Behemoths would help the villagers. So other options would be maybe an outsider, a wise man who visits um, Shambhala or maybe even a higher might. Unfortunately there isn't any evidence about any card, effect text wise or when you look at the artwork um, that gives some clue or some evidence that this could be true. 
Um, at least that's what I thought. So last weekend was the sneak peek, so I took a really close look at the new support cards and I couldn't find anything. So I looked again at the older support cards because I remember that, for example, when I looked at the volcano in the back of the Hidden City artwork, I thought, okay, this is pretty obvious that we get a Subtower B mod, which is a pyrotype because it lives close to that volcano. So maybe we could draw additional conclusions from some of the artworks. And suddenly I actually found something and it, it was incredible. So it was bugging me the entire time and I finally makes sense. So if you took a close look at Nemesis Archer's artwork, you can see this bird, which kind of looks like a bat. And this thing isn't cute at all. It actually has really sharp teeth and it looks kind of odd. And then again, she's also dressed like a bird. Why? Now everything in my opinion makes sense because this is her Ailey and her Ailey grows up to be a behemoth or the mother of this behemoth wants to protect her offspring and think that Nemesis Archer is her offspring as well and therefore she fights together with the Nemesis monsters against the other behemoths to protect the city to protect her offspring. When it comes to attack and defense value, we have to look at the other behemoths. So all of the behemoths with even levels have more attack than defense and all the behemoths with uneven levels have defense as their best value. Um, as a level 8, that monster would ha have attack between Stalagma, which has 2800 attack and Dracosaur, which has 2400 attack. So the middle between those attack values is 2600. And with that, every single attack behemoth would have a jump of 200 attack points to the next best behemoth. So it would make sense to again have 2600 as the attack value. When it comes to the defense value, it's a little bit harder to guess. Um, it could be everything between 1900 and 2500 or maybe even 2600. But I don't want to dive deeper into this because I cannot draw a real good conclusion. The only thing that we know is that the, the defense value will be decent to good. Now the really interesting thing about this Wing Beast type B mod monster is that there is a really high chance that this B mod has a completely different effect than other ones. Because it's not one of these B mods that lives in the cave but instead in the city. So it could completely have a different summoning mechanic. So you cannot special summon it from the hand, from maybe even from the graveyard or things like that. And maybe it also has a completely different effect on the field. But again, to predict this effect would probably be wrong because there are way too many different options that we could have. Also, I don't want to hype up this card, even though I think that I'm around 90% sure that we actually get a Winged Beast type B mod. When it comes to the level, I think actually it will be the level 8 because I have a different opinion about level 11 behemoth, but more onto that later. Let's talk about the level 1 Nemesis monster. Um, and when it comes to level 1 Nemesis monster, it's actually pretty obvious. Because if you look at the other Nemesis monsters, it's really obvious that they are built after some RPG classes like Averia, a tank, an archer, and of course what is missing, and a mage of course. So it would make some sense if there was a mage. But here comes my TV into play where I think that actually the level 1 Nemesis monster is a little bit different than we again think it is. Because if you look at the other TCG exclusive archetypes, you always see one evil guy controlling the others. What I'm trying to say is, there's always one person or one thing which stands above the others when it comes to evilness. Malo Koda in the Burning Abyss controlling the mad branches. Then again, um, Cosmo Dark Lady in her Cosmo Death Star is kind of responsible for the other ships and the Wicked Witch. So again, there has to be some evil guy who is controlling the bear mods and there are several options that I have. To be fair, all of this right now is gonna be a lot of speculation so it definitely could be wrong. I, I want to point these things out because of interesting discussions in the comments below 
Um, maybe some of you have really cool ideas as well. Um, I think the level 1 nemesis monster could be evil, it could be a nemesis caller summoner and it could itself flip face down because it's evil. It's kind of like the behemoth, the evil behemoth and it could have some special summoning um, effect when it's flipped face up um, to special summoning the behemoths from the graveyard or from the hand. If the level 1 nemesis monster is good and it's not evil, then there's only one final conclusion that is that the level 11 behemoth has to be the evil person or the evil being in the Zapter universe. And you probably think, okay, Ultra Mufas should be the most evil because he's level 12. He has the highest stat, he has 3000 attack, but that's completely wrong because it's an uneven level and the uneven even leveled monsters have a lot of defense. And the level 9 behemoth, Void Huluric already has 3000 defense. That means that the level 11 behemoth needs to have more or at least 3000 defense as well. And there's a possibility that it actually has a ridiculous amount of defense. And you have to ask yourself what kind of animal or being could have such an insane amount of defense. If it's the level 11, we have to ourselves why in the world would an animal actually, actually attack such a city? Maybe because it's in his territory, but then again also, the others would also be in the entire territory, but why would they all attack at the same time, kinda? Again, I already showed you how high the defense of the level 11 behemoth should could be. It could actually have up to like 4000 defense and could be the most powerful of all the B mods when it comes to stats. When it comes to the typing of this B mod, I would guess dragon or dinosaur because we still don't have one. To fit the artwork and the style of the same, I would actually tend for a dinosaur, especially with the dinosaur structure deck being around. Uh, but I have one final ridiculous theory and um, it's a plant. Because plants cannot move and they are bound to one location. So if there's a threat nearby like humans, they kind of have to defend themselves. Um, and maybe this plant can control the behemoths. But again, this could definitely be wrong. Uh, this is just a guess of mine. And maybe you have some really interesting topics in the comments below. Maybe some cool theories that I want to actually hear. So please write them down. Um, Really excited to see them. Let me know in the comments below with a comment that you like this type of video because I wanted to do also a video on the new Spyro support because there are also some informations leaked that lead, for example, that Spyro's have a villain um, coming up. And about these cards, I want also make a theory. So if you like this video, please uh, let me know in the comments below or maybe sub to my channel so you don't miss the next video. It's really cool that so many of you still subscribe to me. I really didn't think about that. Again, a lot of thanks to you guys for still being subscribed to me even after nearly three months not uploading anything. Uh, that's impressive and um, thank you for this. Um, so again, please let me know if you want to see those t type of videos. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye.